Khabri, I'm Stephen Bernoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very uh, fascinating things that have been unfolding over this whole North Korean incident. And I personally believe that we are definitely seeing the very verge of biblical prophecy fulfilling itself. Um, I know that many of you guys that watch this news broadcast, you may not be here because of the prophetic side of it, but clearly, uh, it is something that is in very powerful prophetics here. Uh, let me real quick just share with you what I'm speaking about on that. Let's just make it simplified. In Daniel 11, chapter 11, verse 44, it says, But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affrighten him, and he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to take away many. And Many of us have been looking at this ever since Russia came down into Syria uh, and even with China. China, of course, came to Syria at one point to aid Bashar al-Assad. Uh, but then in the latest situation with North Korea, uh, I began to look at uh, China's involvement with North Korea as a partner to the U.S. at first. And then I took a step back and I began to say, well, maybe I'm wrong on this because as I'm watching it, yes, China is trying to resolve the situation peacefully by uh, putting uh, heavier sanctions on North Korea, uh, trying to cooperate with the United States in that regard there. But China has clearly stated for the U.S. not to use force against North Korea. Uh, and at the same time, President Trump, as well as his Vice President Pence here, uh, clearly stating that uh, they'll go at it alone if necessary. And even in one of the latest articles that I was looking at, uh, that uh, the United States is talking about putting nuclear bombs back in North, uh, South Korea inside of Seoul. They're talking about something they removed 25 years ago that they're about to put these nuclear weapons back in Seoul, South Korea. That's a major threat for China and Russia both. And at the same time, that prophecy in Daniel 11, tidings out of the east and out of the north trouble him um, and cause him to go away. Let me, let me, let me put, let's look at that again. And he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to take away many. Um, that's going to be a major war. And of course, anytime you're looking at nuclear weapons involved, yes, many will be taken away. Many will be killed as a result of that. Uh, but notice the, 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 the way that it's mentioned of here. Um, it literally is the east is first and the north is second, even in the Hebrew language. Mimazrach uh, umitzifon. Okay, so it's and from the east and from the north. Uh, and that's kind of interesting because Russia went down into Syria first. So the north would have been first and the east secondarily. But at this particular point now, we are literally seeing something happen with North Korea that actually begins to match this prophecy better because it is tidings out of the east and north shall frighten him or trouble him uh, is another way you could uh, translate this. It's not that he's afraid, but he is troubled. He is bothered by it. And really, uh, anxiety is another way you could look at this uh, translation here. Uh, makes him anxious. And so he really gets mad and he decides to go out and just take out everything. Um, so as I'm looking at that and then I watch what's going on, look at the RT article here. Uh, era of strategic patience by U.S. towards North Korea is over, says uh, Mike Pence while he is visiting there in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, very provocative. He actually goes up to the border itself, right, where the uh, Seoul, uh, South Korea, and North Korea come together, and he actually makes a visit there to the border itself, uh, showing a bit of defiance by the U.S. Uh, government. Now, this is, uh, he's, like I said, he's vowing that their patience is over. All right, now, here's another article, though, that I want to share with you. This is on Newsweek. Russia and China 
are tailing U.S. warship en route to North Korea. This is something that Newsweek picked up, and I had been wondering how this was going to play out because we had already mentioned to you on Israeli News Live the day before yesterday that indeed Russia was moving military closer to North Korea's border, but it wasn't right on North Korea's border. There was still a gap in that peninsula there uh, that was left. Now we find out though that Russia and China are telling the warships en route to North Korea. There again, remember, tidings out of the east and out of the north trouble him causes him an issue because why trump is there and ready to go take out pyongyang for all of its nuclear we weapons ambitions and to try to put an end to kim jong-un and uh what he has been doing in north korea and suddenly china and russia both are starting to come to north korea's aid all right, so this could be a clear more of a provocation of the fulfillment of Daniel 11 and not so much as Syria would be, although we do find Syria is involved in this when we back up in Daniel chapter 11, starting up around verse 39 and moving down, we find out that Iraq, Syria, Egypt, Libya, uh, Ethiopia, all those regions round about do play into this whole prophecy that is happening. But it's almost like this is the culmination right here. It's when the East and the North both are coming together for a resolve and it shows the East starting at first and the North starting at second and clearly seeming to be maybe the very issue with North Korea could be that 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 is where the resolve is that brings about Daniel 11, verse 44. Now I say that because let's back up just a little bit here. I said starting with verse 39. And he shall deal with the strongest fortress with the help of a foreign God, whom he shall acknowledge and shall increase glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for a price. Now literally that is the earth for a price. It's not the word aretz as we say in Hebrew, but it's adama, which is the earth. The adama they divide for a price. This prophecy takes you all the way back uh, at the at, before World War I when the Catholic Church and Great Britain uh, forged an alliance back in the late 1800s. And of course, the Vatican's ultimate goal was to see the Ottoman Empire to be crushed and broken because they saw the Ottoman Empire allowing the Jewish people to buy property in the Middle East. Uh, the Vatican didn't want that. That's why the Vatican worked very diligently and, of course, with the British Empire, toppled the Ottoman Empire that had the control of the entire Middle East. And at that point there, uh, the Vatican was able to f uh, slip in the false Jewish identity into the, uh, the Middle, Middle East there, getting in the Rothschilds and let them begin to buy up land for the greater Israeli project. Um, that was to stop the genuine Jewish people from going back to their homeland and building uh, the right of return. Now, the full pledge of the Rothschild conspiracy of the Zionism to create the, uh, the greater Zionist project, which was really to take over the entire Middle East, uh, was not the vision of the true Jewish people, those that were, they were trying to massacre in the Holocaust uh, in Germany under Hitler's final solution. So when the truest, true Jewish people began to return to the homeland, uh, this being the house of Judah going back to the homeland, that kind of threw a monkey wrench in this whole thing because uh, they didn't anticipate that there would be a massive influx of Orthodox Jews that would come back. Now granted, they don't recognize Yeshua to be the Mashiach, uh, and they're not supposed to until the time that their eyes come open. Totally different idea altogether, but just to kind of give you, let you know on that, this is something that happens at a little bit of a later date. The two witnesses have to come in order for that to happen. But the whole point is, is that this land would be divided. There was a great conspiracy going on. And believe me, the conspiracy is not even stopped. The Greater Zionist Project or Greater Israel Project that the Zionist, not the religious Jews, but the, uh, the crooked bunch from the working with Rome that they're still trying to do is to war against all of the neighbors there and to overthrow them for their own political gain. And of course, as it says here, to divide the earth for gain. 
Um, so that's not stopped as of yet. And I think that has a lot to do, too, with why the Israeli government is now saying that the religious Jews, the Orthodox community, must sign up for the draft. They're trying to put them inside the military because why? They want to continue that final solution from uh, the times of Europe. Uh, not to say that the Israeli government per se, but there's definitely those that are behind this, and maybe even some of those in the Israeli government are unaware of what the ultimate goal is, but they want to put the Orthodox in the military, put them on the front lines uh, in order to take them out. That's my personal opinion on that. But anyway, backing up, let's go back over here again, though. So they go in there, in the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships, and these shall shall enter into the countries and shall overflow as, uh, as he passes through. Now the king of the south pushes him. That's still a big question. Is that Israel? I have kind of leaned towards the idea that it, that it is possibly Israel. But they push at him, and of course they come into the lands, again, the countries, plural, Baratzot. Uh, that is not Israel. That is the entire Middle East. And of course the U.S., uh, NATO, we should say, because remember they staged the attack uh, like Pearl Harbor, they did 9-11, uh, uh, which was a staged attack in order to get NATO to come together, which is the, the Pope's military force. Uh, there's your king of the north, by the way. It's not, it's not uh, the president of the United States or the head of the United Nations. It is the Pope of Rome. He's that king of the north. And so they have gone in there and they've overflowed the countries and they've toppled Iraq. They've toppled Syria pretty much. Uh, but that tidings out of the east now the north kind of throws them off. And it started off with Syria, where Russia and then Syria also helping with Russia in a, in a lighter sense begin to deal with, uh, with what's going on in Syria. That began to be the first thing to slow things down. Um, and of course, when he enters into these lands, as I mentioned before, Edom, Moab, and the chief children of Ammon, they escape his wrath. Why? Because Jordan is the chief children of Ammon. They've always worked with him. The Moabites are your Palestinians, and of course, Edom is Italy. Pretty much every other country, though, in that entire Mediterranean uh, area there, Greece, uh, Turkey, uh, Lebanon, Egypt, Libya, uh, all of those countries have gone through major strife, unrest, uh, financial collapse, etc. Faked coup inside of uh, Turkey there, to, to, which was only a part of what the, uh, uh, the king of the north was anticipating to do in the first place in order to be a part of this destruction of the Middle East. So we come all the way down. They do have the power over the treasuries of gold and over silver, silver and the precious things of Egypt. Uh, why? Because as uh, Moses uh, had the children of Israel take the gold from Egypt when they were leaving, uh, in this day here, the king of the north has made sure he is running the entire monetary system of the world. So yeah, he still controls all of that. But we come back to that tidings out of the east. Now the north shall, go, uh, shall, shall affrighten him, and he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to make away many. So what we saw there in the Middle East is nothing compared to what he's about to do. And even even though this is happening right now in North Korea, uh, this is also a situation that will backfire on the Middle East as well. In other words, he's going to start dealing, no doubt, maybe with the North Korean issue, getting tangled up with Russia and China by doing so, uh, but then he's also going to make a major attack on um, on uh, Syria as well. So he's going to go forth to make away many, because this is where it all began, was in the Middle East. I uh, hope I haven't lost you guys on what I'm saying. I know it's a lot of information. And to kind of give you some more uh, strength to back up what I'm saying, I have a very good friend that gives me some intel that's going mm -hmm. on in the ground in different places mm -hmm. around the world. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, and what we're seeing right now is we're finding out that inside of um, the United States at Virginia's uh, Langley, uh, in, in Langley, Virginia, NATO forces are training. Now, this is intel that I have received from the United States uh, that, the, that right there at Langley, Virginia, NATO forces are training in a major uh, air, uh, air force training operation. 
that kind of lets me know they're getting ready to, to uh, preparing for some type of invasion. Is it going to be North Korea? Is it going to be Syria? Uh, I would think Syria more than likely the Middle East as their backup plan. Also, the United States has moved the F-35s into uh, Europe uh, right now. First time that's ever happened. And again, I believe that is a buildup for about what I'm about to share with you next. So I know this has been kind of lengthy, but I'm trying to really give you an idea of what's going on here in the Middle East. Now, this here is uh, shared by our good friend Lorenzo, and uh, this is... Uh, you don't actually see it, but from what uh, we've heard that this was a huge military convoy that uh, went from uh, Khabarovsk to Vladivostok near North Korea's border there. That was where I was showing you the other day. Now, if you take a look here, the other day I was showing you that Russia's military might was already moved here. We saw that massive convoy uh, that we were sharing. I'm going to show you a news article on that in just a moment that had moved down to here. Well, now they've literally moved all the way down here to North Korea's border there, to this little area right here. China is on the border right down in here. So they are prepared to help protect North Korea. So when we look at that prophecy in Daniel, tidings out of the east and out of the north trouble him, now that begins to come a bit clearer. Why? Because the first one to move their military on the northern border of North Korea was China. China moved the Donfang-41 intercontinental ballistic missile there, uh, which could not be for North Korea because it's a high altitude missile. And of course, uh, once it fires off, it's not going to come down and land on Pyongyang. I think that they're there in order to knock out anything in Japan uh, or to knock out ships out in, the, uh, out in the Pacific area there. Russia now has now moved their military there uh, on North Korea's border there. So yes, tidings out of the east and out of the north are causing him major concern. That's why we saw a, 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 a back down a bit from uh, President Trump not launching an attack as of yet. They watched it. Don't think the U.S. doesn't know it. They see their ships being tailed in by China and Russia, seeing that China and Russia is working together. And they also see that Russia has moved down to the border of North Korea as well. And that lets them know Russia is not coming down there to help them overthrow North Korea, not by any stretch of the imagination. So here was what we showed you the other day. And now this has actually made it to the, uh, the express.co.uk. Video has been released allegedly showing a mass military mobilization in Vladivostok, Russia, just eight miles from the border with North Korea as the world edges towards war. All right. So they actually caught what we had already reported two days ago. Now they are catching that news as well. They reported that today here being on April the 17th, 2017. So now they're reporting that this morning, two days after we had already reported it. But we had caught it when that uh, whole group was up there in uh, Vladivostok. Uh, and now they're reporting it as it has moved from there. Uh, excuse me. We reported it before it went to Vladivostok and they're reporting it as it's moving down there. Uh, so, yes, Russia has reportedly moved military vehicles toward the city, which is within striking distance of North Korea. But that's where they're wrong. They're not trying to strike North Korea. The dramatic move unconfirmed by Russian government was spotted by residents in the border city and posted on social media. This comes as North Korea warned that they are prepared for an all-out war with the U.S. and while China pleads for two powers to back down from escalation. Putin is not there to strike North Korea. Now, I want to make that clear. They are there to defend North Korea from Seoul. So I would say they're in striking distance of Seoul, Korea. All right, so Donald Trump, they put a tweet up here that he had said uh, on April 13, I have great confidence that China will probably deal with North Korea if they are unable to do so. The U.S. with its allies will. Interesting. NATO is forced into another move. Why? Well, it's because it's not the president of the United States. As I sh shared with you the other day, um, it's not the president of the United States that's running the military of the United States. It is the industrial military complex uh, that is running the United States. And I, I really need to pull something up here for just a moment. We're going to pause just a second because I want to see if I can pull this up for you to prove my point on this. 
This is what I was wanting to share with you right here. Clinton's FBI files literally mention the shadow government at the State Department, according to the title of the article here by Melissa Dykes on October 17th, 2016. Um, she says, Bill Clinton once reportedly told senior White House reporter Sarah McClendon, Sarah, there is a government inside the government and I don't control it. Average citizens who talk about things like that, however, are typically referred to as conspiracy theories, theorist, as if a uh, project, uh, pejorative term. Then again, how much of, of a conspiracy is it when the FBI's own documents confirm the existence of something referred to as the shadow government? Check out page 56 from the FBI files on the Clinton investigation, which is making the rounds on Reddit. All right, here we go right here. There was a powerful group of a very high-ranking state officials that some referred to as the floor group or the shadow government. This group met every Wednesday afternoon to discuss the FOIA process, Congress, Congr uh, congressional records and everything Clinton related to the FOI congressional inquiries. The known regular attendees included Jonathan Finer, Chief of Staff of Secretary of State John Kerry, Jennifer Stout, uh, and Deputy Chief of Staff Heather uh, uh, Higginbottom, Deputy Secretary of State of Management of Resources Kennedy, Julia uh, Fritfield, Assistant, Assistant Secretary of Legislative Affairs, Office of the Legal Advisors, Office of the Legal Advisors over the states, and of course they blank out all these other things on here. Uh, but anyway, the, the point that they're trying to make is a powerful group of high-ranking state officials referred to as the shadow government. Really? So Skull and Bones John Kerry is sitting over there in a group literally nicknamed the shadow government, which decides which information will be released to the public and what will be censored in regard to the fellow high-ranking uh, elitist, uh, Hillary Clinton. It's almost laughable, a cliche, except there is... A, that there it is in black and white and still there are people in this country who claim there is no such thing as a cover-up and it's all a conspiracy now that's the whole this is what I'm trying to to get to the point to you here so what we're what we're looking at here is that President Trump I believe that the man really does have a lot of good intentions and means well uh, when he before when he was running for president, notice everything that he had stated. He was going to allow Crimea to be part of Russia because he said it always was. Uh, he was looking at trying to make peace with Russia. He was looking at having uh, Bashar al-Assad staying power. But what was interesting is this man right here, Mike Pence, had a completely different narrative when it came to Russia. Well, maybe Mike Pence is the man running the presidency here. They've always stated that it's the vice president that's the real president in the first place. doesn't really matter who we vote for or anything that we do. There's always somebody else running this entire operation. All you have to do is go back and look at the uh, former defense minister of Canada. can't think of his name right offhand, but uh, he also gives some very inside information about who really runs the White House. Uh, and unfortunately, it's not the president that we are choosing. So going back to this whole idea, though, of what's happening here, now we see that Russia has moved its own military within striking distance of North Korea. But not so much North Korea. It is South Korea that they have their eyes on in the event that the United States goes to engage North Korea in a military battle. So... Then we have also going back to Syria, because remember, the prophecy says in Daniel 11.44 that he'll go to make away many. And I think that the United States and NATO and their allies, they all full well know exactly what's on the horizon. You have to remember, the Middle East was something that the elites never had full control of. So their ultimate goal is to bring down the entire Middle East. Those Arabs out there that they consider to be all fanatics, and I'm sure they have made them into fanatics with all the bombings that we have done on these people, uh, they have decided to fight back. Well, the U.S. has all the ability to completely crush that, that's for sure. Not just the U.S., but NATO and their allies. Russia seeming, though, to side with China to try to put a stop to this. 
Now, is Russia really complicit in playing along with this as some kind of game? Is really the ultimate end to get Russia and China involved in order to bring about a nuclear attack on America to be able to crush the American people that have always had their freedoms and their rights and to crush any idea of a constitutional uh, reform in the country and to bring it back to what it was founded on by the founding fathers. I don't know. I can't say that Putin isn't playing along with this game and that President Xi's not playing along as well. They may very well be. But if they are, the end game and the end result is to crush the entire world so they can bring about their whole new world order plan that they had started from the very beginning. And if that be the case, that may really say a lot about the uh, BRICS organization where you have uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and uh, uh, I forget which one that was, South Korea, that were all part of this new, possibly a new world order, this new banking system. Maybe that is part of a new world order. So question still remains to be seen how this is going to play out. And as we know, oh, by the way, I meant to bring this up as well. So at this point now, Russia is moving in its buck uh, system, as I mentioned to you already, Sputnik speaking about that as well, it says without the Panzer buck and Tor S-400S alone, not enough to cover serious skies. So Russia is really moving in a major amount of equipment there to deal with uh, Tomahawk cruise missiles uh, because seemingly the S-400 and S-300 systems could not knock them all down out of the skies. And I know that that's never been the official version. They just say that 36 of the Tomahawk missiles never reached their target and nobody seems to know where they went. I do believe that Russia tried to engage, but the embarrassment that the system did not work well enough has caused Russia to move in the smaller guns that can take out the Tomahawks at a much faster and better rate there. That will only uh, intensify the escalation, and maybe this is why. The U.S. is training at Langley, Virginia right now, uh, preparing for a massive war against Russia in the Middle East as well. That still remains to be seen how that's going to play out. And of course, it's all over. As I said, the Tomahawk missiles where 23 reached the target, 36 never did reach the target. Interesting, I would say, to the very least. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and I do believe that we are watching the very beginning of the fulfillment of Daniel 11:44, as all those other verses have come into play and have seriously been being fulfilled. Uh, and if you'd like to know about what some of the other verses further up had to say or do, all you have to do is check out some of our other videos, especially on Danoon Institute of Biblical Research, our YouTube channel called Danoon Institute there. Uh, we, do a, we do a lot of teachings on these things, and you might want to check that out as well. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Shalom.